Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. A couple of quick notices. Uh, this weekend we're off to the Atom Science Festival in Abingdon. So if you live nearby or are there for the weekend, pop in and say hi. We'll be answering questions, making a video and just doing kind of fun stuff. So that's cool. Um, link should be in the description. If I forget, which is possible, look in the last video that we did that wasn't this one and the link should be in the description in that. Uh, and second notice is I'm not doing the seven days of science intro for next week. You are. One, one of you, one of you are. Because I think, but I might be wrong, but we're doing it anyway. I think it's the two year anniversary. To celebrate that, we are doing something. What are we doing? Doing a competition-y kind of thing where I'm going to create a little um, server thing on the Discord server. Um, and you, somebody, some of you, are going to put submissions in there. Um, don't put anything that's gonna get us in trouble copyright wise. Um, you can put just you recorded, like your voice, or you recorded your video, or someone else recorded video, just something to put in the Seven Days of Science intro for next week. It can include the message, welcome to Seven Days of Science. It doesn't have to. Um, yeah, I suppose that's it. If it's cut off, then maybe that's bonus points. I don't know, just be funny and creative. That's what I'm looking for and I will decide the winner I guess and maybe we'll do this every week as a little competition -y thing on the discord who knows we'll see how it goes so get out there and start creating intros for seven days of science Starting off the news this week, a report made by the government-funded group Energy Systems Catapult has said that the UK will not reach its 2050 carbon neutral target unless the public stop flying and stop eating red meat. It states that it doesn't really look like the British public are anywhere near ready to make such a big change to their lifestyle. It also remarks how a number of environmental groups have called for the net zero target to be moved closer to the present even 2025, and says that even achieving net zero by 2050 is unlikely, so anything before that would be implausible. The report says that if the government acts quickly, then perhaps the target could still be met, with technologies such as hydrogen power, advanced nuclear power, and carbon capture and storage with bioenergy crops being technologies that need to be invested in. Also this week, a paper has been published which describes the very first remains so far found of the hand and upper limb skeleton of the hominin Paranthropus boisei, or Australopithecus boisei, depending on your preferences. But in this paper, it's Paranthropus. Until very recently, only skull material was known from this species of hominin, but now, thanks to discoveries such as this, more information can be found out about what the body of these organisms was like. The very thick cortial bone of the upper limb indicates that these animals would have had a good deal of upper body strength and seems to support the hypothesis that Paranthropus would have spent at least some time climbing trees, though not as much as its earlier relatives did. The hand also shows that this species had the dexterity for creating and using tools, however the thumbs were not as robust as in Homo erectus. A very interesting discovery and good to see that more information on this species is being discovered. And now over to Ben with the weather. Thank you, Douglas. Well, this week we're welcoming another new genus and species of pterosaur, and what a surprise, it's from China. Named Luchibang Jingjie, which there's absolutely zero chance I'm pronouncing correct, this new taxon is based on a remarkably complete fossil which is only missing the back of the skull and end of the tail. Luchibang has been classified as an istiodactyl pterosaur, bringing the total number of genera within this family to five, and is now the most complete istiodactylid specimen known to science. The paper states how this species is unusual amongst other members of its family, and indeed other pteranodontoids in general, in having relatively elongate hind limbs and a robust body. Additionally, it would have been pretty big for an istiodactylid, as this specimen was not fully grown when it died, but is already larger than most other members of the group. Also in the news, a fascinating new study has just been published on non-avian dinosaur migrations. The paper explains how determining where certain dinosaurs migrated to and from is very difficult, as often it's only based on the locations of their fossils, and then it's not certain if this is evidence of migration or just a wise distribution. However, in this new study, strontium isotope ratios from fossilised enamel was used to tell where an individual hadrosaur from Dinosaur Provincial Park in Alberta had travelled to in its lifetime, 
discovering that this particular dinosaur had likely been as far as a locality in the South Saskatchewan River area, also in Alberta, a minimum distance of about 80 kilometers. This sort of distance is similar to what is seen in living elephants, and so the study concludes that the results gained here do not support the idea that the continent-wide distribution of certain hadrosaur species are due to long-distance migrations. Instead, they would have stayed in relatively limited areas all year round. The study encourages the future use of strontium isotope ratios in determining dinosaur migration behaviours, suggesting that perhaps it could be used to see how far species of ceratopsians travelled. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben, but that's not it, because he's got an update for our speculative evolution project for you all. Ah, maybe not then. Um, well, I, sorry about that, but I, I guess that's the end of Seven Days of Science. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of, of Seven Days of Science. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you next week, um, on, on Saturday, not on Sunday this time, because you're coming to the Atom Festival, aren't you?